come to the meeting. <clears throat> Can't go with you. In me, put them on my grill. Oh, no, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call this meeting to order. Mr. Wilder leads the prayer, and Mr. Jackson leads the page. Y'all would bow with us. <clears throat> oh, dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this meeting, the, the privileges we have in this country to have our public hearings and, and govern our own affairs. We ask that you look over us this evening, help guide us. Uh, we thank you for all of our law enforcement and fire department that protects these people of this county. We thank you for this crowd here tonight and we ask that you give them all a safe journey home from our meeting tonight. All these things in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Jackson. I allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Like a motion for approval of the events of the previous meeting, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by raising your right hands. Like approval of the agenda of this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to read a statement to you before we begin. Take a moment to clarify that the Planning Commission is a recommended body to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. The decisions made on rezoning and variance request tonight will be forwarded to the commissioners for final action on April 18th of 2023. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, please see Ms. Stuller here to obtain a request for him to speak. Okay. Mr. Butler. Mr. Chair, it's a request for a rezoning out at 439 Herbert Farm Road. Uh, it's been postponed back from January and February of this year. Our request is going from R2 to C1 for office and commercial use. This is the location of the property <coughs> on the north side of Herbert Farm Road. In the current zone of the property, it is R2. You have some R2 to the, to the E, or to the west, excuse me, and then C1, C1, C2 to the north and also um, south and also east. This is view of the property. And the existing site. So when the property came in before, uh, there had been some work done on it prior to some approvals happening. That's why there's been um, a couple of uh, postponements on this. So that's one of the reasons why it's taking a little while to come back to you. Um, just so you know, there are currently they're, they're following through with everything we asked them to do um, on that side. So we're comfortable moving forward with the rezoning at this point. There's a concept plan of the property. Uh, the Herford Farm widening will be acquiring. Basically, what's shown there, uh, we'll get rid of that house. Uh, there's existing uh, uh, garages here that'll be part of a variance later, and this shows the proposed development on the other property. So we're only dealing with this one, uh, this one here. Again, it shows a view from Lampkin Drive. 
and also site photos again from before where there was some work done before um, permits have been acquired. More site photos and more. So in terms of the zoning, uh, the future development of this is the um, Evans Activity Center, which is a mixed use activity center. So the rezone to C1 makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's one of those things that we had to kind of go back and reassess and, and wait for some things to happen. I do have some work being done on the property before it should have been done. Uh, but again, from a zoning standpoint, it makes perfect sense to have a zone C1. Um, so due to that, uh, well, one thing to let me back up real quick. One of the things with the acquisition of this area here, um, there is a, a condition recommended by the um, by traffic engineering that require this to be basically no access easement. Um, and also the, the owner has also discussed putting basically what amounts to a landscape buffer back there as well. So you'll essentially have all access will come through Lampkin into this site. So you won't have anything on Hereford at that point. So in terms of the recommendation, we are recommending approval conditions. Uh, the first one uh, there is for the uh, existing garage um, that has to be resubmitted as a uh, commercial project. Should should probably be resented to C1. That's currently in the works. Again, the second one I talked about with it has to be combined with adjacent, adjacent property, and it would be a no access easement uh, for that. That includes that recommendation. Comment. Just a reminder, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, postponed public hearing. Uh, public hearing so. Yes, sir. Is anyone here that would like to speak for or against this issue? Questions, if anybody has any questions. I got any questions? Okay. Thank you. Like a motion to approve or disapprove of this item. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with condition file RZ. 3-01-05 rezoning from R2 to C1 at 4389 Hereford Farm Road. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, Mr. Butler. So the next one is uh, the companion variance on this property. Uh, is due to section 98 list line structure requirements to reduce building setbacks. It shows location on the property. We've seen it before. North side of Hereford Farm Road. Current zoning R2. Also aerial view of the property. And the existing site by the property. So one of the things with this, uh, so when it is rezoned into, into C1, this will be brought into the Evans Town Center Overlay District, which has a maximum of 125 foot setback from the center line of, of Hereford Farm Road. Um, that will not be able to be met with this acquisition of land uh, as part of that widening. Uh, it would put it basically, I think it's two, two feet in um, in order to meet that. So we are waiving that requirement for the maximum setback. The other issue that's more, more pressing at the moment is the garage that's there. Um, it is about three feet from the property line. Um, and again, it is large enough, or excuse me, it's about, um, it's two feet. But anyway, it doesn't mean building setbacks currently. So we do, that we're okay with that garage staying in place there. Um, and one of the things with that, we do have a condition, or excuse me, this shows a garage location. And then we do have a condition, the variance only applies to the existing garage structure. I need a place with existing structure to develop a future structure that will be required to meet the building setbacks. And that includes staff recommendation. Any discussion concerning the variances? And is anybody who would like to speak for or against this issue? Questions? No. Questions? All right, thank you. <clears throat> a motion to accept or deny these variances. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with condition to file VA 23-0102 variance to reduce the building setbacks at 4389 Hereford Farm Road. Second. All in favor signify by raising your right hands. Mr. Butler. So this next one is a request for a rezoning uh, from R3 to P1 at 3535 Stardust Drive. This is post our postponed from our last meeting on March 2nd. Uh, the resident of P1 is for a proposed trial near, near a behavioral center for health and wellness. Here's the case on the property on the north side of Sardust Drive. Again, the current zoning. The property here is zone P1, um, and the, the use is already there. This is essentially a, an expansion of that use. And you have the P1 on the other side of the road, or the other side of the street from Stardust, and but everything else around it is R3. So the area of the property, also the existing site, and the plot of the property. This is the original plan that we saw two weeks ago. Uh, one of the things from that, um, we did have a condition that asked for them to put in 10 parking spaces, which, which would be the maximum required under our code. Uh, so this is the original that we've seen. They've now come back and revised it. 
uh, to show the 10 parking spaces you can see on the uh, north and east side there. Uh, they, they were able to do that by, by making the addition that, uh, so a little bit smaller. And they also did a note or added a note that the existing driveway will be removed. Um, that was a comment uh, from traffic engineering. So they're showing us that you know, they can meet that, those, that, that condition um, as, as drawn. One of the things previously, um, there was some concern about traffic on or uh, parking on, the, on, on Stardust Road. Um, this is one of those things that it's it's going to be able to provide more parking. It may not, we cannot, you know, confirm it'll solve the issue. Perhaps that's one of the issues that may come up with it. Um, in terms of the overall design of it, this is how you would want to do uh, P1 that goes into a neighborhood. Uh, we do have a variance request coming up next for this the, uh, the, the buffer there. But again, they're doing it with true good pavers, which are uh, basically a grass paver. Essentially, it looks like a, a yard uh, in some respects. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that's very low impact. Uh, they are keeping the existing residents and also having this small addition on the back. But it's, it's one of those things that if you were to do this, this is kind of how you would go about doing it. Uh, so we do have a, well, let me go, go on the uh, future land use map. It shows existing parking on the site and also future development map. Uh, one of the things with this, uh, we are comfortable with it really only due to the location of this P1 next door and also how they're going about doing it. Um, it's, again, low impact and kind of how you want to do this to bring this kind of type of use into the neighborhood. So due to those factors, staff is recommending approval with the following conditions. And again, we are keeping that condition in place with the 10 spaces and also one regarding the replacement of the existing residents. Uh, if it is, let's say it burns down or something. Uh, that has to make it compatible with the surrounding neighborhood to maintain that residential look. It's not, it's not going to be looking like something you'd see in a, you know, an office park, perhaps. Um, again, to kind of main, to maintain that, that look and feel for the neighborhood. That includes staff recommendation. Ladies and, <clears throat> excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give each side an opportunity to address this issue like we did before. So uh, probably would be as well for the folks that have made the changes to come forward first and discuss the changes right quick for me, please. Appreciate it. Wilson Haynes, attorney for the applicants. Um, see where the property is located. All they're trying to do is just to expand into the property behind them to give them a little more room to work. Uh, as Mr. Butler's pointed out, uh, this is Dr. Wilson. Here, here with me. Um, the idea is to maintain the existing residential look and feel to this property. They're doing this so that anyone driving past the property would think it's still just another house. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to look better. It looks now because it's going to get painted. There'll be additional landscaping. There won't be any signs out front. There won't be anybody coming in and out the front door. That's going to be a, an emergency exit only. Uh, the impact will be minimal. Uh, as far as impact to the neighborhood, we heard, we heard you know, some, some, of the, some of the concerns of the neighbors that have been expressed to us, and I think to this panel, and I'm sure you'll hear again today, was they're concerned about existing parking and traffic conditions. They, uh, the existing parking is simply not adequate where they are now. They're going to add 10 parking spaces in the back. They're not adding any more staff. They're not expecting much in the way of patient increase, maybe one to two more patients a day, <laughs> what they're really going to be able to do is provide longer patient services. They'll be there longer, but they won't be more frequent. The um, existing traffic problems are not going to get any better unless they're able to do something like what we're trying to do here. We can't think of anything else you could do other than increase parking, which, again, those 10 spaces behind will... I don't know if it's going to completely solve the existing, but it's certainly not going to make it any worse and uh, should make it better. Uh, I think one of the things that happens is people coming in during the day don't have a place to park while they're waiting to discharge their children. The, the people who receive services here are primarily uh, grammar school and, uh, and adolescent children who are getting neurobehavioral services. And this, this facility is a great asset to, the, to Columbia County in this area. They're one of the only places that provide this. They're the only place that provides much of the services they provide. They get patients from uh, the, the, the children that I mentioned. Uh, they also treat uh, servicemen who are coming back uh, from service uh, under a federal, under a, a nonprofit organization. 
Uh, they have a couple of those that are they're, they're there all the time. They also get referrals from counties uh, that are in the judicial system that uh, send them there. Uh, for, I don't think so much Columbia County, but uh, some of the underserved counties in the area. But again, this facility is, 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 a, is an asset to Columbia County. The extension, the expansion that we're asking for is going to have, I think, a positive impact on the neighborhood, not a negative impact. The, um, and again, for those who are involved, who are concerned about this, one of the other concerns is, well, what's going to come next? Uh, I heard people say that they're worried there's going to be a gas station or a strip joint or something like that coming in after this one. Uh, well, that commission's not going to let that happen. We've got this provision in the, in the restrictions or in the conditions that we'll mention a minute ago that if, it, if the building ever comes down, it's got to be replaced with something that looks like it. So it, their intention is it's not going to ever look like a doctor's office. It's going to look like a house. And it's intended to stay that way. You know, what happens 100 years from now, I have no idea. But for the foreseeable time, that is the plan. And they are very conscious about that. Uh, one of the other things that hasn't come up, but it, it, it may, the next door neighbor um, in the back, you know, the existing plan calls for that privacy fence and then some shrubbery and so forth. If there's something more that we can provide back there to make them more comfortable, we'll do it. A better fence or more shrubbery or more trees, what, whatever would make the, because we're more concerned about the next door neighbor really than because uh, the front's taken care of. But you know somebody's got to live next door to it. So if she has, they have a problem with that. We can do everything that we can. We can't make it any wider. We don't have room, but we can make it thicker or higher or better or whatever will we'll make them feel better. But again, I think the biggest problem, that the biggest complaints, were the traffic, and that is going to be attenuated to, at least to some degree by these additional par by this additional parking. Is there anything you'd like to ask us or Question. Dr. Anderson? Okay, uh, y'all I believe have a copy of a petition that we circulated <clears throat> around the neighborhood showing that uh, 12 of the neighbors had um, consented to this or, or at least were in favor of, it, of the expansion. I know there's some neighbors that have concerns and, and we, we understand that. And we want to address them as any way that we can to make this work out. Thank you for your time, sir. And we have a couple of neighbors, I think, that are here speak in support if they'd like to. All right, sir. Said you had a neighbor that wanted to speak. Hi, my name's Amy Dean. I'm not a neighbor, but we are a patient. We've been with Dr. Gangarosa for, um, I think, five years, since 2018. We have We've been part of that parent struggle where we come to get services and our son has been there. His, his service is an hour long, twice a week. And we are part of the parent struggle that doesn't have a place to park. So you're kind of jockeying for positions. Um, sometimes I have seen other parents where they have had to park further down the road or we have to go <coughs> across the street somewhere else. It's just, you just don't have a place to sit and wait for your, your child because the services aren't where we are in the room with them during the, their procedures. Um, so for me, having this extra parking space would, as a patient, relieve that congestion that's on the side of the road. Because there have been many times where I've had to park illegally behind another set of parents waiting for them to come out. And as soon as they come out, I can jockey into the, the spot. So having these 10 extra spots would take parents off the street, which then makes it safer for everybody, neighbors, patients, children, because not all the children are capable of coming out on their own. They need to be walked out with a parent or staff for their safety issues. So being able to park in the back is also an increased safety issue for us because your, your children's more protective. Um, Dr. Gangarosa's office has expanded in so much as far as the services she's able to provide for our families. When we started, it was just speech and neurofeedback, and now we're able to continue with speech and occupational therapies and the neurofeedback, and we've seen tremendous growth in our son. So her program has a huge wait list, and the fact that she's one of the only providers in town, you can't get in, it's, it's hard. So being able to have the space for patients to be able to park and have this extra space 
for her to be able to do the practices in that building would be a huge asset to Columbia County because no one else has it. All right, thank you, ma'am. Now it's your turn. I have a group. I can get them to um, I, I think it's interesting you should Excuse me, hold on just a minute. She's, ma'am, you're interrupting the meeting, ma'am. If you would, come to the microphone either have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> now I, you go. I didn't bring my same thing that I brought last time because I assume you still have a copy. I think it's interesting that who they brought today is somebody who's very close to me. Just he, he actually works with me at the school, and they're in my Sunday school class. So I just find Which that extremely interesting. Paperwork. And like I said, I'm, I'm totally... I know the work they do is good at that place. I have no doubt. They stay right where they're at. I don't have any issue with that. I've told you I've been there. They've been doing it for a decade. I've never so much as called anyone at Columbia County. I've never called the police. I've called them once or twice, but not even have been a nice pest to them to call. And I, you know, I didn't want to have to get in the habit of counting how many cars are at this place every day. And we haven't heard anything for the two weeks since we postponed it, and I didn't expect to so much, but I didn't know there was a change or a revision in anything. But I would count on more than three days since the last meeting, there was 12 cars there. I don't imagine those all belong to patients. I imagine they belong to staff. So if the addition is seven parking places or 10, and like I mentioned, with who they have on their roster as employees or as doctors or psychologists, they couldn't have a meeting. They could not have a staff meeting. The traffic continues the same. They still have five cars crammed into one little spot, which I assume is their staff. Those aren't patients. Those aren't the, you know, they're not the ones that are clogged up those spaces. These spaces will just accommodate their staff. And I mentioned too, there was an article in the Augusta Chronicle from when they started and there was 100 patients then. I can't believe that they still only have 100 patients between that many doctors or psychologists. And I, like I said, I don't want to get into keeping their counter or their calendar or maintaining what they're doing. I simply don't want that in the neighborhood. I want my neighborhood to stay a neighborhood. I live two houses down. My neighbors here are directly next to them. I, I know that there's even a question to change the variance of the buffers. I don't want to encounter all that. I plan to spend the rest of my life there. My husband grew up on that street. He's been there since the 80s. My mother-in-law has lived there. There's many of our family that lives around the corner, and we've been there for decades, being good taxpaying citizens, doing what we're supposed to, not being a nuisance, not calling code enforcement every day. And I've experienced that enough in the business I'm in and know how that works. I simply don't want a professional zone property in my neighborhood. I think you can try and do everything you want to maintain a residential image, but you won't. That, I mean, Dr. Gangarosa won't be there forever. But you, you won't. Excuse me for interrupting, but you do realize what's there is going to stay there. What, what's that? I do. Yeah, today. What, the, what zone professional the now? Yes. I, I, it can st I'm not opposing that at all. I just don't want it to move down the street. I don't. don't and I this. apologize. My point was not to do anything to him. My point was just to say what she is saying, that it was just imposing on our neighborhood. The property towards Baston Road, we are great. We are fine with. All of Nothing us have been their, driven down and looked at it. We're aware of everything. It seems to me that it would improve the parking issue. Making a prove there won't be road that many cars right. on the road. But I, to make my point clear, even if it did, I don't want the property zoned professional because I don't want that in my neighborhood. I'm just saying, hey, here's all the problems they already have. Like so, I've spent probably three. I've done been over there at least three or four times, maybe five even. And sat there and watched traffic because because of what you said, like and what you said about people flying through the neighborhood mm -hmm. and things like that. Honestly, I didn't. I never saw it. Now I'm not sitting there for eight hours a day. Right. Obviously, I've got I've got other things I've got to be doing too. But um, I did see parking in the street. That that seems to be the biggest issue uh, that we saw. I had to look up what they're going to use for papers. I had to look that up. I had no idea. I've never even heard of them. Um, pretty cool concept. Um, everybody, everyone that I saw coming in was going off. Bath, came in off Baston Road. And, and, and actually, the, you know, initially, why we postponed this was the exact reason you just said. 
it intruding into the neighborhood. Um, I don't know. We we've all been talking, you know, talked about how many times. Like tonight, we just said how many times. I didn't even realize these these guys have been down there um, and looked at it. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm still kind of up in the air about which way this is going to go. Well, is it true that our neighborhood roads are not county maintained? Oh, they're county roads. County roads. Yeah, that's a county road. Oh, that's county roads. Well, I don't see, know where we that tried like a year ago to get speed bumps put in due to the influx of the people that didn't have parking, so they would just you drive to, around from Rainbow to And you the, have to you have to request it to county commission. Right. And they said it. that it wasn't a county maintained road. No, that's not true. No, there's a there's a process that they go through. So it's just a process that we need to encounter. I have let, let I Mr. Stewart. Oh sorry. I, I'm, you go ahead. I, I I I understand what you're saying. I think all of us understand but but it's there, it's already there, and and I think if you thought about it in sense of uh, probably wouldn't like it to be there at all, and I and I think I could agree with you. I wasn't here when that when that happened, but it's there, and I honestly think if you could thought about it because it's there, this is better. It, it, it's probably not a hundred percent fixed. Which I think they've they've honestly said that, but but I, I think this is better. I think clear up some of what you're what you're dealing with, um, but you know, like Dempsey said, it, it's going to be there. It's there, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like we're having to deal with it. And no, just mm -hmm. doesn't seem like a viable answer. It's like you don't do anything. You know, you kind of leave yourself out to traffic congestion and wrecks and God forbid one of those kids or something like that got hurt. But to respond to that, sure. had I been somebody calling every single day and complaining about it, would that have made a difference? Oh man. Because I'm not, today I'm not complaining about the parking. I'm not. I, it's part of the issue. It's definitely a circumstance. But you're complaining about what everybody else that probably sitting here agrees with you about, but it's there. It's there already. In the, yeah, at the end of the street on Bastion and, Road. The address is Bastion Road. And yes. Uh, and honestly, everything you said and every reason you gave us in the last meeting, I wrote down. That was the reason for the postponement for us to get to this point where we could have an yes, educated conversation that. about it. And while I'm saying that, let Mr. Sterling respond to you about the speed bumps because he knows the issue. Well, I, I appreciate your confidence in me. I don't know if it's entirely <laughs> warranted, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, so, yes, there is a process, as was mentioned. Um, I just happened to look it up on uh, the county website. Um, so Stardust is, and I didn't check the other ones, but I'm assuming they're also as well. But Stardust is a local road. So what you would need to do is there's a form or there's an application for speed, I think it's called speed bump or speed hump policy. Um, and basically what that means is, is you fill that out, then the, the county's engineering department, whether it's traffic engineering or roads and bridges, they will go out and do an assessment of the road itself. And um, based on, you know, the criteria that they have set up for that, they will be able to then determine whether or not uh, it would, would actually uh, be applicable to put in some sort of, sort of um, speed control device, you know, whether that's a hump table, whatever the, you know, the, the method may be. Um, I did note that um, it is a local road, so that may be part of the issue. And when you uh, say local there's, road, does that mean there's a local classific Columbia County owned road? These are, this, this road and I'm sure the other two in the neighborhood are county owned roads and maintained roads. So what that means is that they will then be able to make the determination if any improvements can be made in terms of traffic controls. So what you'll need to do, and we can certainly point you in the right direction, um, either af after the meeting or if you want to call tomorrow to our offices, we can get you in touch with our engineering department and they can start you through that process. Um, I will note that it is a local road, so that may be part of the issue. Um, I know that there is certain road ne uh, classifications that do not qualify, just as a matter of course. So um, that's something that I can't speak to and our engineering department certainly can. Because we have tried in the past. Yeah, and I, and I to the influx of traffic. Hundred percent understand. Is there a speeding issue? Had, they had 
Well, no, they have no parking. Because that's that's the so only criteria you're going to have. Stardust to rainbow to well, to rainbow. So, to so let me. Let but me, we're also yeah. because of the Augusta Christian. But the parking, people, but the parking yeah. is going to be eliminated for what they just said. Well, let me let me let me add a couple of. Um, I mean, it's both. Let me add a couple of things to one. It is a public street. So there is not an enforcement mechanism by which the sheriff's department will be out there ticketing non stardust or, you know, right. any road name, you know, so there's going to be that uh, ability to do so. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, it is a connected road to other parts of the, the county, of course. So there is the ability for you know myself or you know anybody in the room to drive down that road and, and connect through if speed is the issue there is uh, there's an opportunity whether there's you know something that is warranted I, that I can't speak to so you know that's our best suggestion is, is we'll get you in touch with the uh, engineering department and uh, get you through started on that process and then whatever they find is you know what'll what'll end up happening thanks sir any other questions I, I, I want to be completely clear. I understand yeah. the parking. Oh, you have been gotcha. completely yeah. <laughs> I don't want my neighbor to be a medical office. Period. I understand that. that. That's what I don't want. I do not want that. I think of the future and I think of everything going forward. <clears throat> so all those other issues are topics for me, but the root of, is, the root of it is what I want my neighborhood to maintain as. Thank you, ma'am. And I've brought all these people with me and we have a signed petition to yes, when we need to present that. I understand. <coughs> thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. You present yourself very well. Thank you. <laughs> I do have a question. Um, Wilson. Parking for the staff. She brought up a good point. Parking for the staff. Does this, does this address that as well? It, it does. Um, it, most of the staff is actually remote, or a good portion of it is, uh, you know, bookkeeping and so forth. Only, only the actual treating clinicians or what a doctor in there are there at any particular time. They're not generally there all days. Uh, a lot of them are half days and, and so forth, uh, just because of the nature of the, of the practice that they have. Um, so, you know, that's 10 cars off that, that don't have a place to park now that will have a place to park. That's, that's a significant number of cars. How many uh, patients normally at one time would be there? Come to the microphone so we can Come get you on the audio. Yeah, um, there, I did an analysis of it, and there's never more than three or four cars that are supposed to be there at a time. So, patient cars? Yes, patient cars on that four car pad. So, you normally don't have over three or four patients at a time, correct? At one time. How many staff cars? Staff cars. Depends on the day. Yes, because some um, people are there only one day a week and some are we'll two days. Maximum. And two are already in the driveway property. Okay, thank you. Any more questions before they sit down? Thank you. Very people that are on, the number of people that are on the sign out front. One is totally works from home remote. Two of the, the OTs, two of them, they work less than half time, even together. But one's not going to be there anymore. And it's then the uh, then the speech pathologist is only there four days a week. She's the only one that works five days a week. Thank you very much. And what are your, what are your hours? Um, We're there formal. nine to six. Mon only Monday through Friday? Thanks. Appreciate your time. Now. But before you vote, Mr. Drake, you said you had a petition. Can you give it to us? We'll enter that into the record. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion to approve or disapprove this issue? Chairman, I make a motion to approve the petition or file RZ 23 03 01. 
zoning from R3 to P1 at 35, 35 Stardust Drive. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of this issue, raise your right hands. One opposed. Okay, let's go to the variance. This is a request for a variance. Sections 9 98 list lot and structure requirements, 9 139 buffers and screening, reduced building setbacks and buffers at 3535 Stardust Drive, uh, current zone R3 single family residential. Again, we just saw the property, north side Stardust Drive. This is zoning of the property and also the aerial view of the site, the existing site, and also the plat of the property. And the overall, this is the new conceptual plan, uh, just to clarify. So, what we're looking at today is a reduction in the front building setback only, no, no reductions in the side or the rear, and then a reduction in the buffer in the red area that's shown there. The buffer will be going from 20 feet down to 10 feet, and on the, uh, the front building setback is a reduction of only about a foot. Uh, we could actually do that as a minor waiver, but we included it with this variant just to put them all at one time. So with the reduction in the, in the uh, buffer there, uh, you do have a, a fence and also landscaping that will, will be provided. Uh, so again, there's no real change in the actual what will be planted there. It's more of a, a reduction in the, the, in the depth of it. And part of that, or actually all of that, is due to the location of this residence. Uh, you can see there that 20-foot buffer and also the parking too. You can see the 20-foot buffer goes right through the existing residence. So it's impossible to have an actual 20-foot buffer. One of the, the concerns though with any type of, you know, having a business next to a residential is light and noise. And that, that, that can be, you know, the light can be past a typical time um, or, or more than is typical uh, for a residence. So we have a condition uh, regarding that, requiring a photometric plan to raise a one foot candle or less of the property line to require prior to site plan approval. That includes staff recommendation. Motion for approval to deny. We still have a public hearing. hearing. So you have to reopen. Well, it's public hearing. Okay. Hey, sir, I'm sorry. Um, as Mr. Butler said, most of this is a result of the position of the, locate, of the, the existing structure. Um, a little closer to the street than it should be, a little closer to the neighbor than it should be. But um, again, as I stated, we're very conscious about the neighbor, about the neighbors. Um, and again, uh, we've got minimums here that we have to meet. They are more than willing and uh, may even on their own um, exceed those standards as far as the fencing and shrubbery. Uh, I was just asking her about the lighting at night. Uh, the lighting in the back of the, or, or would be strictly sensor. So only if something's back there would the light come on anyway. But as far as no, uh, light pollution, would not expect that to be a problem, but you know, if a squirrel or something sets it off, do want the buffers to protect them from the light. And plus nobody wants to look at a parking lot. I have a question. Yes, sir. I don't know if I can do this or not, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. You want to know what pavers are? I have no, no idea. No, I, I, I know what <laughs> okay. pavers are. I looked them up. I looked them up too. I, I had to look them up, and they're actually pretty cool. Um, um, I want, I want, somebody's word. I'm going to go back there and look to make sure that that, that whatever they put up in there is a buffer. Mm -hmm. um, I just want your word on that, 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 that buffer. Yes, sir. That, that, uh, sure, that, that is their intention. Um, and, you know, the county has authority to come in and make them do better if, they, if you don't think they're right. All right. So, so James, one of the things that, um, just to kind of peek behind how we do plan review, uh, we, we have a landscape architect, Jonathan Williams, who is involved with all of that. He's involved with the, on the front end and also the inspection of it. So it, it will be done correctly. If you're concerned about that and you want to add a you know, belt and suspenders, you can't have a condition that requires them to have conversation with him prior to submittal, or you could even have uh, requirement to have a landscape architect pre prepare the plan. Add some money for the applicant, but there is the option. Just to let you know. Bill agree to that? I, I, I'm not sure what kind of cost that is, but I suspect they would be there. Again, they're, they're agreeable to anything that's reasonable, and that sounds reasonable. I agree with that, James. I think. When you made the motion, you need to state it in the motion. Yes. Thank you. Not one condition. Anything, any other questions? Already have one. That, that was it. Thank you. This. Open. Wait, wait. Come to the microphone. Oh. Yeah. Like With all due respect. Wait till you get there so we can get you on. Are we discussing the variable of lights and squirrels 
and music and, and like, what are we discussing? Because the lights doesn't bother me. Squirrels don't bother me. They could play music till 10 o'clock. That doesn't bother me. Just get a little ridiculous. Now get to your point. The point is, is the, the traffic that they are bringing into my neighborhood. That's already been discussed and voted. These variables, these are what's written down. Okay, so what we just discussed was squirrels, and that's so not an issue? The variance, the buffer variance, the, the lighting variance, the buffers between where the house is and where the fence is. Okay, well, I just wanted to make it a point that the neighborhood doesn't care about that. We're, we're good with Ma'am, that. We understand that. Okay. Okay, now, if you'd like to make a motion and add that to it. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with condition file VA 23-03-03, variances to section 90-98, 90-139 to reduce front setback, building setbacks to 53 feet from the center line and to reduce the structural buffer width to 10 feet and to add, um, so it kind of depends on how you want to do it. Um, if you want them to have a landscape architect do it, you can say well, landscape plan shall be, repair, pre be prepared by a licensed landscape architect. Okay. Uh, landscape ar the landscaping must be prepared by a landscape architect. A second. At 30, sorry, 3535 Stardust Drive. And, and just to clarify, so we're keeping the photometric condition as well? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure we all understand. Okay. Now, do we have a second to that motion? Second. All in favor signify by raising your right hands. If, at this point, if if the folks from Stardust Drive would like a minute to leave, you're welcome to, or you can stay for the other business. Giving you an opportunity while I'm. Landscape architect. We have a next. Yeah. I, I was hey, trying not to do this when it comes to space. Uh, no. <laughs> huh. Oh Lord help us. Okay. Next item on the agenda is Mr. Butler. Thank you, Sharon. So my son's operator's license for Jessica Jessica Yates, DBA Balanced Body Work. She is working on a 3685 Riverwatch Parkway and also has mobile massage services. She meets all requirements of the ordinance. That staff recommends approval. Uh, Ms. Yates here. Okay, any questions? I'd like to make a motion for or against this issue. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the massage, massage operator's license for Jessica Yates, 3685 Riverwatch Parkway, Suite 100. Mr. Service. Second. Second. All in favor? Next item on the agenda is Ms. Montgomery. Yes, sir. This is a request for a provisional home occupation for cloud construction located at 1905 Smith Crawford Road. Property is located on the northeast side of Smith Crawford Road and is currently zoned RA residential agricultural, as are all of the surrounding properties. The aerial of the site, it is a 16.6 .6 acre uh, property. As you can see, is fairly heavily wooded. Uh, this request was triggered by a change of address uh, submittal for the business license for cloud construction, uh, which clears land for local builders and delivers rock and topsoil to job sites and constructs driveways. Um, some of the trees are brought back to this property after clearing and are used for firewood. Uh, so the business operations on this property include the office located in the house at the rear of the property, um, and the, the lay down area for the trees and some equipment storage. Um, that includes uh, two dump trucks, trailers, and an excavator um, that are parked on the site, as well as that outdoor storage area. Uh, there is a large shop building on the property, but the majority of that is for uh, personal use and not counted towards the business. Um, so they're, they're not running afoul of the 50% the of the, the house square footage with that. So the, the main issue in this case is the outdoor storage. Um, there's only one employee other than the business owner, so there's a limited number of vehicle trips. Uh, there is a pretty significant outdoor storage area, as you can kind of see on the aerial, but it is quite well buffered from the road and from the neighbors. 
Uh, so there likely are not any concerns with this business in this location. And staff is recommending approval. Any questions to do with this issue? I have a motion for approval or disapproval. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the provisional home occupation for cloud construction at 1905 Smith Crawford Road. Second. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Uh, yes, sir. This is uh, five applications we received at the same time for the Augusta National Women's Amateur Golf Tournament taking place out of the Champions Retreat uh, Golf Course, and uh, they have a couple additional tents in the neighborhood as well. We received them all at the same time and approved them all at the same time, and these presentations are for information only. Um, we'll start with uh, the tents at the uh, at uh, 4945 Hardy McManus Road. That's uh, Grace Baptist Church. This shows the location of the property. The property zoning, again, it operates as a church, uh, typically. Uh, they've made no changes to the temporary structures uh, at this site uh, compared to last year. They have a restroom and office trailer and then a tent for the uh, vehicle loading area. Uh, next, we have uh, the golf uh, maintenance area where employees of the golf course typically work. They have some temporary structures in here as well. Again, mostly concessions for employees and uh, restrooms. It's zone PUD because it's within the rest of these uh, structures will be within the uh, neighborhood of champions. Uh, and uh, again, this shows where the concessions and restrooms and different storage pods will be uh, placed at, in the uh, maintenance center of the golf course uh, during the course of the uh, tournament. Um, again, uh, they also have a security hub where they'll be charging uh, golf carts and uh, moving their you know, different security employees throughout the, the facility. Uh, they're gonna be placed in the middle of this roundabout here. This shows the location north of Champions Parkway. Uh, it's again zone PUD within the neighborhood, and there are no changes to this location either. It's an office trailer and a restroom trailer, uh, and again, this is kind of the hub for where they're going to have their security employees predominantly. Um, next again, we have, uh, this is the application for all of the temporary structures that will be on the golf course and in the clubhouse area. Uh, again, this is the golf course uh, plot zone PUD in the neighborhood. And again, the various structures continue to be of a concession or restroom or office nature, including uh, in uh, this case, uh, scoreboard towers and boards as well throughout the course. Uh, additionally, again, up in that security hub area, there are a couple spots where they're gonna charge golf, uh, golf carts that they'll be using throughout the week. And again, more charging stations. Uh, near the clubhouse in that case. Um, and then these are the, again, more security tents, restroom trailers, uh, and uh, a practice tea tent. Um, one of the few minor changes that they've made this year is this TV tower has uh, gone up in some of its dimensions. It was smaller last year, but it's been increased this time. And this is the clubhouse area. And then finally, they have a uh, security checkpoint at the front of the tournament uh, that'll be actually on uh, Riverwood Parkway's right of way. It's a private road, though, um, as stated and <coughs> listed here. This is the location near the roundabout where they'll be placing that security checkpoint tent just for you know players and uh, patrons as they enter onto the premises. Uh, again, this area isn't highlighted as a part of the PUD, but it is a private road maintained by, you know, by the HON within the PUD. Uh, and that shows, again, the dimensions of the security tent. They haven't changed compared to last year as well. And all of these applications, again, were received and approved at the same time. We approved them on March 8th. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Douglas. For phase four, Ms. Montgomery. Yes, sir, this is a preliminary plat for phase four of Four Oaks, not located off Wrightsboro Road. This is off Hereford Farm Road and is currently zoned R2, single family residential. Uh, this section includes 32 single family lots with a minimum lot size of 10,123 square feet. Uh, the required setbacks are a minimum of 55 feet from the center line of the roads and 10 feet from the side and rear property lines. 
Uh, sidewalks and street trees are required on both sides of the road since the site was mass graded and 3.94 acres of open space is provided in this section. Uh, we did approve a variance for the 50 foot undisturbed buffer along the eastern property line. Uh, this side has a 25 foot buffer with a structural element, a uh, fence or a wall uh, that is to be maintained by the HOA and these requirements are noted on the plat. Uh, the remaining property lines, uh, with the exception of the southern property line that's adjacent to Four Oaks, uh, shall retain the 50-foot undisturbed buffer. And staff is recommending approval. Anyone here who would like to discuss this issue? Any questions? I have a motion to accept or deny. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the preliminary plot plat for Four Oaks, Phase 4, off Herford Farm Road. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Okay, Ms. Danielle, the next one. Yes, sir, this is a final plat for Phase 3 of Canton Park, located off Riverwatch Parkway, and currently zoned AR-10 Apartment Residential and TR Townhouse Residential. This is the location of the site on kind of the northeast side of Riverwatch Parkway, adjacent to the existing phases of Canton Park. Uh, you can say the majority of this section is zoned AR-10. Um, that comes with some additional requirements beyond the, the TR section. So for that AR-10 uh, zoning, there is a requirement in the county code that the amenity area related to this development must be complete prior to build out of 50% of the homes in this section. And the applicant is aware of that requirement and intends to comply with it. Uh, this is the final plat for this section. It is 20 townhouse lots with a minimum lot size of 1,700 square feet and an average lot size of 1,850 square feet. Uh, building setbacks are 20 feet from the front property line and 10 feet from the rear property line. And since these are townhouse lots, uh, the side setbacks are zero feet. Uh, sidewalks are to be provided and 1.85 acres of open space is provided in this section, including a 40 foot natural buffer at the perimeter of the site. And this is the existing site. And staff is recommending approval. Anyone here that would like to discuss this issue? Are there any questions? All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Oh, we got to have a motion. How about a motion? I'm jumping ahead of myself. Oh, oh, what's that? See that? Yeah. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion to approve the final plat for Canton Park Phase 3 off Riverwatch. A second. Second. All in favor? Okay, Ms. Montgomery. Yes, sir. This is a final plat for Section 2 of Tillery Park located off Baker Place Road. It's on sort of the south side of Baker Place Road and is part of the Tillery Park planned residential development. This section includes 62 single family residential lots with a minimum lot size of 5,760 square feet and an average lot size of 6,689 square feet. Setbacks are a minimum of 15 feet from the front property lines on the public roads and 10 feet from the front property lines along the private alley. Side setbacks are seven and a half feet for the front loading lots and six feet for lots served by alleys. Rear setbacks are 10 feet. This section includes 4.12 acres of open space and sidewalks and street trees are required on both sides of the road as well as a pedestrian trail along the extension of Canterbury Farms Parkway and the new collector road Tillery Park Drive. This is an existing view of the site. And there is also a required berm on Baker Place Road. Um, the zoning conditions for the approval allowing that berm instead of the typical undisturbed <coughs> buffer uh, required the berm to be complete and landscaped prior to approval for a final plat for any lots within 300 feet of the berm. Uh, the berm is, as you can see, constructed, and the majority of the landscaping is in place. Um, the plat will not be released from plan review until all of the landscaping is complete. And staff is recommending approval. Anyone here would like to discuss this issue with us? Questions? We have a motion to accept or deny this issue. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Tillery Park, Section 2, off Becker Place Road. Second. All in favor, signify with your right hands. Okay, now we'll get into the public hearings. Ms. Mr. Butler. Hello, Sheriff's request for resigning from R8 to S1 out at 3265 Jacqueline Drive for a lay down yard for a camper, camper, camper rental business. This is the location of the property on the east side of Jacqueline Drive, just south the intersection of Jacqueline and, and Cobham Road. There's the current zone of the property and everything around it is zoned RA, residential agricultural. 
there's a current aerial of the site. You can see the camp majority on the property. Um, the applicants have owned the property since I believe 2017. Um, and this is a, a request that came to us from code enforcement um, just to provide that clarity on the front end. This is the existing site. Also the plat of the property and the overall development plan. So one of the things with it, um, they have a handful of structures out there. You have sheds and carports, um, nothing that's really permanent, permanent, uh, perhaps. They're currently storing about 18 campers out there. Um, they do plan to put about 200 feet of, oops, 200 feet of uh, fencing along Jacqueline Drive. Uh, we do have a condition to kind of um, allow for that to be a little bit more fleshed out as we move forward. Uh, that would be with some landscape, and they've already said they'll add some. We'd like to kind of have a little bit of collaboration on that. Um, in terms of setbacks, they have typical 75-foot front setback and also 10, or 10 on the sides, but then on the back, they do have a, a reduced one down to 10 feet, which is not typical for RA. Um, there is nothing behind them over here. Nothing can really, or nothing to be impacted by that, so staff is comfortable with that reduction uh, from what would normally be seen in RA. One of the things with this site, if we'll go to the next uh, slide there, Typically, what we're looking for with something like this is um, well buffered and you know, hidden away. And they've accomplished that so far. You know, they've been there for several years without really running afoul of anything. But the other thing that comes into play with this that is uh, somewhat unique is the soil survey that's shown here. Um, it would be very expensive to put a house on this property, residential agricultural. This one that there is a, a, another aspect to this that kind of says the highest and best use is likely what they proposed. Um, it's one of those things that the sites probably doesn't pencil out if you were to try to build a house on it. So it's one that you know, the, the best use is maybe the storage uh, facility. Overall, um, in terms of the future, future development map, it is within the rural character area. Um, nothing really says that you can have something like this out there, but we do have examples of you know, properties that have been able to be converted into what amount to a light industrial type use with sufficient buffering. Done that several times throughout the county. Um, due to these factors, staff is recommending approval uh, with conditions. Again, the first one there, uh, proposed fencing and supplementation of the buffer will be completed within six months of approval. And then also we'll consult the county landscape architect uh, to kind of devise that plan uh, to make sure that it's going to function well uh, through all four seasons. That includes staff recommendation. Anyone here that would like to discuss this issue from the audience? More questions? Chairman, I make a motion to approve with conditions file RZ2003-03, rezoning RA to S1 at 3265 Jacqueline Drive. Second. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, Ms. Mystery, are you the next one? Yes, so this is a major revision to S1 at 4567 Cox Road on 0.44 acres. Current zoning is S1 and the major revision is to add professional uses. Here is the location opposite um, Evans High School on Cox Road. The zoning is S1 at the moment. The majority of the res residential zoning around there is R2, single family detached. Um, the adjacent property to the north is P1. Um, the three parcels are a P1. Um, there's also the S1 across Cox Road, which is a church, and there's other P1 S1 zonings further down Cox Road, which is a salon and a nursery, and some other commercial zoning along the North Bel Air. Here is the uh, close up of the aerial. It's an existing um, building and parking area. And these are some street views that show the existing building. And then the second photo shows. The looking southeast, where you've got the P1 office building to that's adjacent there. Here is the plat. And the applicant included a development plan to show what they, they want to do. So they're keeping the existing building, uh, they're going to remodel and make it look nice. They've got um, asphalt parking here and gravel parking here, which will have up to three um, employee cars or trucks. Um, the parking lot in the middle will be crushed asphalt for um, kind of the public parking. The driveway will be increased to 24 feet in width and the fence on this side will be removed which is where the septic tank and drain fields are and that part will be landscaped to make it look 
uh, more professional. Uh, the previous zoning uh, in 2006 actually was to P1 zoning, and that was a cabinet shop at the time, and it was done to try and make this area more conforming with the adjacent P1 uses. Um, the S1 zoning was done in 2013 for three businesses that were operating there, um, house cleaning business, um, cleaning supply store, and um, a tool repair business as well. So the new S1 revision will allow just P1 uses um, and the um, business owner has just the two employees on site at the moment and they want the option to have um, tenants in the future as well. So they will dress it up and make it look nice as well. These photographs just compare the 2013 um, uh, photos. The top one on the left is the photo from that file. Um, there was a lot of chain link fencing on the front there that made it look quite industrial. Um, so that zoning and the uh, S1 did clean up the side a, a bit at that time. Um, and now the, the goal is to make it look a lot more professional. There is an existing wood structure which acted as a sign for this business at one point. It is on the neighbor's property according to the aerial. So the applicant intends to work with them to see if they can actually remove the wooden structure, uh, which is a little bit of an eyesore at the moment. And they want to propose a sign that's more um, like a decorative post sign, which will be more in keeping with the, with the area. Um, and there's, um, there's a description in the narrative that allows them to a little bit more flexibly on the location just because of the, the site um, entrance is quite tight there. Um, the future development map uh, puts this in the in-town neighbourhoods area, which is mostly a higher density residential area. It does allow some civic uses, schools, churches, daycares, that sort of thing. Um, because the existing use is non-residential -res at the moment, this is in keeping with um, the character that's already there, so we're uh, recommending approval to the, S the revision to the S1 to add professional uses. That concludes staff recommendation. Anyone here that would like to come forward and discuss this issue? Questions? Motion to accept or deny. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve file RZ 2304 Major Special Revision Property located at 4567 Cox Road. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, Mr. Butler. Madam Chair, it's a request for rezoning um, out on Round Shore and Riverwatch Parkway for multiple parcels. Uh, the applicant has requested to postpone this request, uh, so we won't be spending a ton of time on it. Uh, we'll still introduce it and talk about that at the high points. We won't be getting you know, down into the weeds too much with it. Again, the property is currently zone R2, requests rezone to C2 for a proposed car wash. This is the case of all the properties on Round Shore Way and also Riverwatch Parkway. And also the current zoning in all zoned R2. Uh, you do have to the north, you had a mixture of planning development, AR and R2. And also, also the south cross where Watch Parkway, you have more R2. And then to the west, R2 as well. I uh, do have some C2 over here, of course, for uh, the, the pro proposed legal development. Shows the aerial view of the property, again, primarily all residential, with some of it being undeveloped currently. The existing sites, go those quickly around tree. Also, Roundtree again. Shows the plats of the, of the properties on Roundtree and also the plats on Riverwatch Parkway. So, the, all, all you mentioned before, the request is for a proposed car wash as the conceptual plan. Uh, there are companion variances and variations to this, uh, to this whole property. Um, one of the things from a staff standpoint is the a car wash is, is considered a light industrial use or industrial use under our code. Uh, one of the things with the future development map uh, for this area, which is the Evans Activity Center, it does mention that um, industrial uses should be more on the on the edge of that activity of that activity center. This is practically in the very middle of it. Um, you also have the concern of these properties here not being included within it. Um, it creates you know this is absolutely a becomes a it's still developable, but it's not really what it could be. Um, these properties over here are now going to be. Uh, forever combined, um, they basically can't function out the other if they were to be developed. 
Uh, so there are some concerns from staff standpoint regarding those factors as well as the future, the future development map. This shows the future development map itself. Again, activity center, the mixed use activity center within Evans, again, practically right in the middle of it. Uh, so that is our biggest concern with it. And staff uh, was recommended approval, but we're okay and postponed this for April 20th by applicants to work more on it and also consult with staff. That includes staff recommendation. Let's move back to the map. Take it, please. One that was covered. Show me where the grocery store is going from Mount Deep. Right there. Right there. So, yep. Which ones are you talking about that will be? Everything in the yeah, I said. What's the, problem? <laughs> What's the problem with that? So it makes it so that those two are basically have to be connected to be developed. It's not a problem per se, but it's one of those that it creates these odd little developable pieces that maybe not may not be as beneficial as they could be. And I'm not being sarcastic, but I never have understood what our responsibility would be. So our, our it's not really much, but at the same time, it's also you don't want to create a problem. That's what you're. What we're also looking at it from our side of it. You know, the the mixed use activity center anticipates is becoming commercial. It really does. So it's one that you want to make it so it's easy to be developed. Uh, you don't want to create you know these properties that maybe can't be combined or maybe are just become dead. If so they're, that was the only issue, would that be something that would, they would turn it down? So I think you saw the question of the, of the car wash itself. Um, that use being industrial under our code. Now, do they exist in C two? Absolutely. But when they're being requested to be rezoned. C2 and we know what the use is and we also have a very clear um, uh, how we want to treat what, what amounts to an industrial property in, in, a, in an activity center and that's where we have a, a concern with it. Um, now again uh, there's there are car washes right down the street that are in C2. Um, this is more of an establishment of a new one may be the, the bigger issue. So your perspective if, if the lot was bought next door to it I think if you bought, if we're looking for, you're looking for a, here's what the, the minimum threshold is. Is that what you're yeah, wanting? What would okay. make it more pleasing to the so, county to, to approve? Realistically, the one on the end there on Jamaica Court that I've put the little orange, yellow or uh, green thing on, goodness. That's the one that really is, would would need to be acquired. And those people are the ones that are holding that up. I would assume so. Um, these two over here, it'd be nice, but that's not a requirement in our, in our mind. But I was curious. Yep. Question answered. Yeah, I do. So, so all you got to say about it, Mr. Bird? That's all I got. Anyone here that would like to address this issue for or against? Okay, we need a motion to postpone till April the 20th. Chairman, I make a motion to postpone file RZ23-03-05 rezoning from R-2 to C-2 at 4539, 4543, 4547, and 4551 Riverwatch Parkway, and 525, 527, 531, and 533 Roundtree Way to the April 20th Planning Commission. That cover all three of these, Mr. Butler. Only well, covers this one currently. The rezoning. We're going to them separately. Uh, we're, we're we're moving that way at this point. Already there. <laughs> okay, that's the motion. We got a second. Second. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All right. Next thing is a variance to multiple sections. Look at 90-98 list lot structure requirements. 9-139 buffer and screening. 147 H4B and I3 use provisions. To exceed the maximum building setbacks, reduce structural buffers, allow operation of a car wash and 50 feet of residential use, and also allow a drive through on the properties on Riverwatch and Roundtree Way, which total three acres, current zone R2. This is location of the properties, also the current zoning, aerial view of the site, existing site, uh, Roundtree, and also the plats for Roundtree and the ones for uh, Riverwatch Parkway. So what we're dealing with, um, if this were to be rezoned to C2, you would have a maximum setback from River Watch Parkway and also Roundtree Way. Um, they can meet the maximum setback on River Watch, but they cannot meet it on Roundtree. You can see it right here. Um, you'd have to get a pretty interesting building to make it work, uh, to be able to meet both those setbacks. 
again, they got lots of issues with this site on, with, it, with it being on a corner. Um, it's very hard to meet two max setbacks on with two roads. Uh, we waive this all the time. Um, so really no concerns on that. But again, we are recommending disapproval of the, of the rezoning. So we're kind of in the same boat with that. So for the buffer itself, so you have two different things. You have a reduction on this side from, actually it's on both these sides, from 30 feet down to uh, 10 feet. And you also have the buffer requirement from a car wash, uh, of a 50 foot separation from property line to property line for a car wash to a residential property. And you have the, all three of those can't meet that requirement. Again, we have one um, last meeting. Um, no real concerns with that either. Uh, and in terms of the drive through, um, your, what we're talking about is really this area here. Um, not really any way to get around having the drive through somewhere where it's going to be potentially between the the um, or be, uh, uh, between the road and all that. So also something you can't really get around. Um, overall, again, we are still recommending disapproval of the, of the rezoning. So we're recommending the uh, we, we're recommending rest, uh, disapproval of the request, but also the request to postpone to April twenty. Blue staff recommendation. Okay, now we need a motion for this from April the 20th. Mr. Chairman, no public hearing, or no public. Well, public. we've asked a minute ago, but I'll ask again. Does anybody want to talk about this issue to us? Right, well, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to postpone file VA 23-03-06, variance to section 90-98, 90-139, 90-147H4B, and 90-147I3 to exceed the maximum building setbacks, reduce structural buffers, allow operation of a car wash within 50 feet of a residential use, and allow a drive through on property at 4539, 4543, 4547, and 4551 Riverwatch Parkway and 525, 527, 531, and 533 Roundtree Way to the April 20th Planning Commission meetings. Second. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Now let's go through this motion one more time. <laughs> we talked the, about there. The variation is a superintendent roll up door face or right away into exceed glazing percentages on the properties of what we've been talking about. Let's go ahead and go to the, um, the elevations. So uh, really no concerns with the, the roll up doors. There's really no getting around having these doors face one of these roads. So no concern there. Special elevation looks quite nice uh, for a, uh, a car wash. Uh, they may exceed the glazing percentage. We're not 100% on that, so we have included that as a something that could be on there. Again, in keeping with the theme, we are recommending disapproval of this variation. But again, they have requested to postpone to April 20th. Mr. Jackson, you want to talk? Do we have anybody who would like to discuss <laughs> this issue? Thank you very much. Now. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to postpone file VA 23-03-07 variation to section 90-96 C1 and C5 Evanstown Center Overlay District to permit roll-up doors to face a right-of-way and to exceed the glazing maximum on property at 4539, 4543, 4547, and 4551 Riverwatch Parkway and 525, 527, 531, and 533 Round Tree Way to the April 20th Planning Commission meetings. Second. Call to signify with your right hand. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Okay, the next item is Mr. Douglas. Uh, yes, sir. This is a uh, parcel at 6001 Horizon West Parkway. Uh, it's about a four and a half acre property, uh, currently zoned M2. Um, they're seeking to install an outdoor storage area that would then uh, trigger uh, the necessity for a, a buffer at the edge of their property uh, line, uh, at their property line abutting a church that is adjacent to them. Uh, this shows the location of the property uh, southwest of the intersection of Horizon West Parkway and Horizon South Parkway. Uh, this shows the zoning again. It's in an area that is mostly uh, our M2 general industrial industrial zoning district, um, except the property immediately south of them, which houses the Warren Baptist uh, Grovetown campus. 
Um, this is an aerial of the property. And again, they're seeking to install an outdoor storage area south of the building here in this grass field. They would uh, resurface uh, that with, as a uh, gravel lot. And again, that would uh, and trigger the necessity for buffering along that southern property line that you can see there. Uh, this is an ex the existing site uh, as seen from uh, Horizon South Parkway. And then this is an existing photo um, from the back side of the building. This shows the grass field where they'd be looking to install that outdoor storage. And uh, so you're looking south in this photo and the building that you might be able to see through the trees, uh, hopefully, is the, uh, the upper portions of the building that are the Warren Baptist Church to the south of the property as illustrated previously. Uh, this is a plat of the property. And then this is the uh, proposed site plan um, again. So what we're looking at is the property um, uh, to. Uh, OK, yeah, so the this area out here is where they're looking to install the outdoor storage area. Again, they would resurface that uh, with gravel. At that point, uh, they would be required buffering over here along this property line. Um, instead, they are asking to install uh, the retention pond and an emergency access easement here to run from their property to the Warren Baptist property, um, as opposed to a landscape buffer that would, uh, would inhabit that area. Um, part of that is to maintain the size of their outdoor storage. They uh, you know, say that it's desperately needed. Um, additionally, that access would allow both churchgoers uh, from Warren Baptist and employees of this business access to Horizon South Parkway through each of their, each of their properties, which would uh, be mutually beneficial. Um, Warren Baptist did also submit a signed approval letter stating that they're on board uh, with the granting of this variance. Um, additionally, what is helpful, as you saw in that previous site photo, is that uh, this property is uphill from Warren Baptist. And so the church goers on the weekends wouldn't be looking into that storage area. Um, also, the variance would only be granting uh, a variance to the landscape portion of that buffer. The lining of the storage area that you're seeing would still be a six foot chain link fence with screening installed as well to include the gates for that access easement. Um, and uh, yes, that concludes staff uh, recommendation. Uh, we're recommending approval of this variance. Questions? Questions from the floor? Don't complicate it. We're going to charge him by the minute. I just thought y'all might be getting lonely up here. My name's Mark Ivey. I'll just be <laughs> to answer any questions y'all may have. Hey, Mark. Good to see y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Make a motion to approve file VA 2303-04 variance to permit emergency access and detention pond within the buffer against X-069 parcel 001F 2001 Horizon West Park. Second. Second. it. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Next item, Ms. Montgomery. Yes, sir. This is a request for a variance to section 90-53 list of lot and structure requirements at 3724 Postel Lane. This property is located on the north side of Lakeside Drive in the Winfield Hills subdivision and is currently zoned R4 recreational residential as are all of the surrounding properties. Uh, the property to the rear is owned by the Corps of Engineers as part of the property surrounding the lake. Shows the aerial of the site. Um, you can see the parcel itself is not rectangular uh, at all. Uh, and the property lines are not perpendicular to the road. Uh, this is a, an older development. It was platted back in the 1960s prior to our current zoning requirements. Uh, we would not typically allow lots shaped like this today. Uh, so it does not meet the, the typical Shape, it also is smaller than would typically re be required for the R4 zoning district. So it is uh, very much a non-conforming lot in that, that regard. Um, you can also see from the aerial that the house is quite close to the existing property lines. Um, so we are dealing with the existing house not meeting setbacks. Uh, this shows the existing site and this is the property line marker. There's another one in front of that tree back there. Uh, you can see the houses are very close together here. Uh, typically, there would be a 10-foot side setback requirement, so these houses should, in theory, be 20 feet apart to meet the zoning, and obviously they are not in the existing conditions. 
Uh, so this is the as built of the property. Um, you can see the existing house currently sits just over four feet from the side property line there. And there is a small corner of the house that crosses onto the core property at the rear of the site. Um, the core is handling that encroachment separately from this variance. Um, they were included on this review and they don't have any concerns with the variance itself. Um, and we're going to reach out to the, the property owner regarding that encroachment. Uh, so the reason for this request is they are proposing an addition on the, of an additional garage on the front of the house. Uh, this is expanding the non-conforming structure, so it does require a, a variance to get the site into conformance. Uh, since the house does not quite parallel the property line, uh, adding the garage on does bring the, the front corner of the garage even closer to the property uh, line at about 2.96 feet from that line. Uh, so the requested reduction is to a side setback of two feet. It gives them about a foot of leeway in the construction there. Um, no particular concerns with this. I mean, it's very common for houses at the lake to be you know, pushed to the back of the lots to be closer to the side property lines. Uh, that this is a, an older plot and an, an older development. Um, it's likely been this way for, for quite some time. Uh, so staff is recommending approval with the condition that due to the short distance to the property line, uh, section R302, fire resistant construction of the IRC, requires that garage wall to be a one hour rated wall with no overhang or openings. And that is from our building standards department. And that concludes the staff recommendation. Anybody like to discuss this from the audience? Any questions? Motion to approve a condition file BA23 03 05 variance to reduce setbacks. In the rear setback to zero feet and then 720 for Postel Lane. Second. All in favor? It concludes our business for today. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Everybody raise your right hand. Commissioner, that's Boogie Weeks. Yeah, how'd you get?